there is some kind of substance in this guy that I've not been able to really fully appreciate. Now, you know, I, I, I'm not lying. I, I, want to, I, I don't want to put no bones out there. And I want to tell you all something. I campaigned hard in the last election. And not campaign directly against Chastney, against some of the things that he was saying and doing, I thought were not right for St. Lucia. Some of his statements were, in my opinion, statements that should not have been made. If you wanted to make a statement about colonialism, about um, economics, and there's not a conscience, I think it should stop there. By saying colonialism had a conscience to me, I don't know what, where that going. Colonialism didn't have no conscience. Colonialism is an evil, an evil that brought about people like the Queen of England. To establish colonialism in every African state, to fight against the Mau Mau. England did that. Fight against the Mau Mau to see to it that even if the Mau Mau were victorious in the other periods, that they wanted to establish in Kenya to re-establish, they wanted to force the Mau Mau leaders and them to be, to, to, to commit and to subdue and to bow to the British Empire. So I'm not going to stand here and, and just accept things just like that. I'm not going to do it. But to make them statements there was not right. I agree. But when we have this government here now with a black boy who claiming that he's a little black boy from Masha is a racial connotation. It's racial. Because black Marshall is not a place of any kind of white majority or colored or, or, or in between color mi minority or whatever you want to call it. Because there was a thing they called colored and black and all, you know, different colorism. When the colorism thing come in, there is all these things. But Marshall is not like that. Castries is is a, a, a area of the majority is 98.9% .9 black if you want to refer to people as black so for saying that little black boy from Masha become prime minister is an insult in my opinion so today when Richard Frederick now is telling you all kind of thing about Chastney and Chastney this and Chastney that to me, it's just jealousy, in my opinion. And it's because they are afraid of Charles. It seems to me the only politician that the Labour Party fear and would do everything for that person not to be the leader of government or the leader of the opposition and to become and emerge in the next convention of the UWP to be the leader of that party is Shastri. And if it's that they're fighting against, it means that there is a fear of Shastri. Now, I don't know, you all can agree with me and disagree with me, but that's just how I see it. I have criticized Shast. I brought him on my show some time ago. I brought Dominic Fader on my show. I've brought in people of labor, people, party people on my show. People you have been on my show more than anybody else, no matter of fact. You, you, you have been on my show more than anybody else. But I don't know the moment I start to say things that doesn't really, you know, that's not in sync with what you're dealing with. You have a very skinful guy. I'm, 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 I'm thin skinned guy. I remember I've been saying a number of things about Bell Rose. <laughs> and I, 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 I must be honest with you all guys. If I'm down on the road looking for a bus and I'm stranded and Bell Rose passes there with a vehicle, she's going to stop and give me a ride. That's a fact. If I'm stranded going to my home, no matter what hours of the night, and Bell Rose is going home, it doesn't matter. She will stop and pick me up. 
Philip J. Pierre is going to behave even if I'm just by his gate and I stop there a while for some reason and he's coming out of the gate he would pretend I'm not there I wasn't standing there the security person who's guiding his vehicle out of the gate to guide him out to go wherever he wants to go would see me and say hello press hyper how are you doing press hyper but Philip J. Pierre would do as if and would behave as if he didn't see me that's what you know, how thin skin is Philip J.P. You thin skin, Philip. But earnest and not Escoba, sorry, but I nearly say Escoba. Not Escoba. Ernest and Richard Frederick. They're going to deal with you. I am so I, I, I must say that they probably know how to deal with you properly. You went into a deal with, you know, with um, Richard Frederick. You had an election you could have won without him, but you went with a deal with him. And now watch where we are. The country is dead. Nothing is happening. The growth of 8% have nothing to do with you. If the country had stopped, stopped, and that's literally stopped because of COVID. St. Lucia in March, 2020 was stopped. St. Lucia didn't have no movement from abroad. We were almost isolated as a country for the first time in our history. You, Philip J. Pierre, said only Chasne for tourism would come back. I think you, say, you said it to um, Janika, uh, Janika, uh, Janika Simon or some words like that. You alone said, you, you said that. You said the only person who thought tourism would come back to what it was pre-COVID is, is Alan Chastney. And, and apparently he did. He did it when the country was locked down completely. Irrespective to the criticism I've done of Alan Chastney. And I still stand behind them. I don't support colonialism of a conscience. I don't support it up to this day today. But the point is, if he missed folk, that's his business. But the point is... He have done a better job than you, Philip. For your for your 25 years in governance. At one time, you was actually, people may not know that, but that's true. You were actually Lansico's moose boy. You were Lansico's moose boy. A UWP. And Lansico, you, you, you were Lansico holding Lansico bag for him. And then you, you announce that he, you're going to make the human resource center in his name. But you didn't put a sign there. But you named a road where Hunt have nothing to do with. And you name it after him. And you put a sign there. Woe be unto you, Philip. You're going to pay for that. But the point I want to make seriously is that the crisis we faced and the, 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 the growth now has nothing to do with you. You have stopped projects, road projects, and other projects of housing and so on. You have done nothing. Projects that were stopped by your guys and were delayed by your guys, such as the, the higher project in, in Swazay. You all stopped and tried to stop these projects. La, La, La Resource project was stopped by some of your friends where the Sanders was trying to bring a new hotel here. But you know, you all want to promote. You know, sometimes when people want to promote something like, a, a, let's just say, a massive mega project to promote an ordinary project. <laughs> I mean, for a matter of fact, someone want to project a magic multi-million dollar apartment store department to rent to people. But then you start to support to build one little place where have four rooms in it to rent to people. That's that's how you all guys, you all guys are small. Thinking small. Not thinking ahead. You understand? So the La Resource project was stopped by you and your friends. And now you all play, you all you all try to stop everything with with um, um cabot and so on. But now you're all in, 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 in hands, hands in arms with Cabot. Oh, where's the problem? There's no problem anymore with Cabot. Cabot is okay. 
The numbers are 489-4781. Call, you could call me here. Call me on WhatsApp. Call me and talk to me about some of the problems that we are experiencing right now in St. Lucia. Nothing is going on in the country. We plan to give the children something about uh, um, 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 laptops. Laptops might be tall. What laptop could do for you? You cannot download an, a book in on laptop. Lap, laptop doesn't have enough space. Don't let them fool you with that. Don't let Philip and Ernest and some of these other guys fool you with these things. You need ebooks. Just there was correct. Ebooks. Ebooks you need to bring to bring to, to children. Laptop doesn't have enough space to download no book whatsoever. You know how many pages there in some books? Laptop doesn't have space for that. That's why they create a new thing called ebooks. So give the children ebooks. Don't fool them with laptops that can help. Can help neither students nor children. Bluff again. Bluff. 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 Just bluffing people. Bluffing people over. Shasne, 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 shasne. As if that will help. Shasne may not be doing everything correctly. Even now in opposition, I'm not sure he's doing everything correctly. He's gone in diaspora. I'm not sure he's helping the people he's supposed to help. The people that he's supposed to associate with in terms of this whole serious campaign, if they want to have a serious campaign against the Labour Party to get them out of office, I don't think he's moving in the right direction yet in terms of this campaign. There are some media people out there that want to assist and help and he's not really tapping to them. This whole thing about Sky FM and Sky FM, I don't know, but I'm not sure this is the way to go. Sky FM was there and they lost elections. They need to look into that deeply. And I'm not bringing down Sky FM in any kind of way and those who are there. The point I'm making is there are Arab media people and houses that Shastne and them need to assist. The UWP cannot depend on Sky FM all the time or a one lotion. They need to really be careful about that. I'm serious about that, what I'm saying there now. We, they need the flambeaux. Because if you notice right now, when you look at the circle around you all with the media houses, a number of these media houses, uh, they either some of them owing a lot of money and you're not hearing nobody saying they owe in a lot of money because they are in bed with the, the present administration. People who have given the government a lot of money. There was also a situation where there was some kind of Lebanese guy who wanted to finance projects in St. Lucia, bigger projects than has been financed now by certain names of Syrians we are hearing. And I understood when that happened, the, 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 the said Syrians in St. Lucia decided to put a set of big money into labor to make sure that Lebanese guy doesn't come here and spend all the monies he wanted to spend. <laughs> These are the stories we're hearing. But that's what we're hearing. Is it true? Is it true that these stories are true? Is it true that some Lebanese guy, Leb Lebanese guy wanted to come and spend endless money here? And because of that, some other Syrian guy decided to spend endless more money supporting the Labour Party. But then y'all out there, yeg, yeg, and what we're calling it there, the little people who are the mass voters, the people are really voting that make government win. Are you getting anything for that? These guys are getting their handful with benefits, concessions, and so on and so forth. What are you getting? Empty stalls, empty markets, no one there. We had a season that wasn't a season. We had an off season that was the first time in history that we find we had an off season and there was no ship for the off, se off season. First time, I <laughs> like, first time. I've never seen that ever. Even in 20, 2021, after Shastin and them left, there was an off season. As soon as Labour got in office, that they, 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 the rain start to show itself up. We had no offices. The last ship we had there, and that ship was actually a ship from the, the last season, not the off-season ship. Could you imagine that? And now we're there now, anticipating the new season that may happen and start at October, the mid-October or so forth. 
Anyway, the numbers are here. The numbers are 489-4781. Murders and crimes are still happening in the country. 489-4781. Some of you say I'm not saying the numbers regularly enough. You could call the number direct. You could also call it on WhatsApp. They, they have WhatsApp in, on the number as well. But you are not calling neither WhatsApp nor nothing. So, so what's the problem? Why are you all not calling? Why are you all not calling WhatsApp? Why are you all not calling um, you know, to, to say something to us? I don't know. You, you all have your own problems. You all have your own concerns. And sometimes people don't talk because I don't know what they're hoping for something. Because you know, when you talk, people say, I was looking for something and you didn't get it, so that's why you are talking. So it looked like some people, the reason why they are not talking is because they're getting something. Someone told me recently that um, the, the pass through reckon, re, re, um, mechanism is not working anymore. So the Prime Minister is working with his friends, his friends in the the petroleum industry you know so his friends now you know what he does is to make sure they the, while the price is going down he's not going to bring no price down now for now he has to make sure that they sell all the goods of the prices that they had there before and then afterwards now when the the price is going to be brought down is when they get new stock and what the guy told me i wonder if that's going to be true that you go you will go to the gas stations and so on and you may not get cylinders and tanks and so on because they have sold everything they have on the high price and they're waiting for a new stock now to sell on the new low price because the price of petroleum products have gone down on the international market so there is no pass-through mechanism right now. Don't wait for pass-through mechanism. And um, based on what's happening in the international market, that price is going to go into go down. Mm, that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Philip J. Pierre has, is in cohorts with the guys who are his friends, you know what I mean, in the petroleum product industry. And they are going to do things as they feel, how they wish. For matter of fact, the only one Philip J. Pierre bringing down the only cost of one particular item within what you call the pasture mechanism that he's bringing down is the 100 pound cylinder. The last time it, it was brought down from 140, from 340 something to 320 something, and then of, of 40 something to 320 something, and was brought down to 320 something to, free, to 303 or something. Low, low very low. They're bringing it down. That was the only one. Everything else, in, including gas, um, 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 kerosene, remain in the very same price all the time. There is another situation that is really compounding the, 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 the airwaves now these days, and that is about the, the immigration situation with the people who went to, to uh, uh, um, what do they call the place again? Uh, Some place in, in Canada. That they went and um, they went to have to, to, to work there. I think people, I'm not people. Um, the big bear, what's the name again? Um, King was supposed to go up there and see what's happening. But anyway, what we saw of, of uh, you know little you know little views of his um, and preview of him being up there um, was that he was there somewhere eating a lot and dancing and so on so he, he was paying no mind to the reality of what he has to go up there to affect the situation what was happening and what's going to happen with St. Lucian's going up there to work at this um, you know uh, 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 plantation this farm uh, strawberry farm and so on you know and um, in, in um, something um, let me try. I try to remember the name of the of the of the um, of the, the, the. Let me see if I could find um, the name of the place where um, this thing was supposed to happen and um, cause problems with Saint Lucians up there. And I think um, it was with the 
I try and look at um, and I'm trying to get some of the situations dealing with that especially with the question of the the uh, St. Lucians in Canada who went up there um, on an immigration city on an immigration thing um, in, in um, in uh, trying to find the name this is this, this is kind of beating me a bit um, I'm gonna find it over. Canadian Farm, it's a Canadian farm program. And um, uh, that Canadian farm program is taking place in the in the St. Lucian women who spent nearly six months in in, um, in a, a, a session agricultural farm working program in Canada says that um, uh, the females and experience ill treatment and so on in that particular farm in Canada and um, whatever they were supposed to do in that farm um, and as a result they have experienced a, a urge you know method of authority having a proper um, investigation being sent to women women workers and from Canada's farm um, in um, I think it's Nova Scotia they call the place where a number of St. Lucian's women went there. I think it's 40 of them and and um, what's his name again? Um, Stevenson can refer to them as ambassadors because he went there and he went and just eat a lot and didn't do nothing much in proper investigation so I understood the contract that was signed here in St. Lucia that contract was a contract that they were supposed to get something like I think 37 point 37 point 67 dollars or something like that Canadian per hour but that didn't happen when they reached Canada they had to renegotiate a new settlement which was about paying as you or, or paying by by um, based on 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 what you do for the day in terms of um, um, boxes and so on so if well, it's based on if you have some boxes, you have to fool these boxes and you get paid according to these boxes. And some of the things that they thought that they would have gotten because it's part of the program, which is electricity, water, food and other um, amenities that, but they had to pay for these things as well. And I'm understanding that they also are paying some kind of um, 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 portions of or uh, there is some kind of percentage that they has to pay for the Eastern Caribbean, um, it, uh, some Eastern Caribbean agency that's supposed to look after their welfare and they are not looking after the welfare. They also have something I understood that they has to pay some money's on which is to do with um, um, health, I think health. Um, you know, they, 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 if anything happened to them, so their health insurance and they were given a card and that they could present if they have any kind of health issues and so on. And I understood when they went to some uh, areas where these the cards should be, um, you know, shown to people where they are going to for medical health and, and medical help, that they refuse to accept these cards. A number of things, including that a, a, a St. Lucian woman was also kicked by one of these people who are you know managers or supervisors of one of these farms these farms are way inside of the place and um you know to reach to nova scotia uh to, to the part of canada um it is it's like you know it's four hours canada is one of the most the, the vastest countries in the world in terms of its length and, width and, and length and width and width so it's not a small country it's one of the largest countries in the world so or if not the largest so what are our people going up there for and our country doesn't make sure or ensure because you know this is this thing they call about uh, you know modern slavery is still really at work here and uh, and the farm slavery and you know 
farm exploitation, sexual exploitation, and all these things are still going on right now. Uh, you know, this kind of slavery is existing presently in the world. And not only today, it's been decades now since we have been getting documentaries and other documented um, situations dealing uh, or documented um, uh, uh, programs dealing with this type of situation about, you know, uh, slavery and and, and, and so on and so forth, child pornography, child enslavement, enforced labor, of, you know, labor where people are underpaid and so on and so forth. And, and, and modern day slavery is really a part of this type of kind of, you know, small island, you know, where they consider to be these countries are hell holes, so to speak. And, um, Maybe, and, and some people even say some of the reasons why they don't want people to go to public hospitals is because public hospitals have a way of keeping record and then record could be the environmental people, environmental agencies that look into questionable situations where people are involved in terms of uh, uh, medical conditions and certain uh, conditions where people are working under, which is involved uh, you know, chemicals and the the exposure to chemicals and other kind of hazard within the workplace and so on. Some of these women complain of the back pain and so on because they have to stoop a lot. Um, as you know, strawberries are something in a vine and sometimes you have to, you know, bend your back a lot to try to fool a, a bucket or, well, I would say a box or something with strawberry and you're not the only set of people. They're not only solutions, Jamaicans and people from Dominica, Barbados and elsewhere. It has been a situation where I think is a fuck out, is a, is a serious outcry for St. Lucians who are out there trying to eke out a, a, a living just by going out there. And sometimes it's sad, you know, you live in your house, your country, to go abroad, to, you know, make sacrifice. And King considered as a, to be an ambassador. How could that be? You're not a sports person. You didn't go there as some kind of big person who is some kind of CEO of some kind of big industry in the world like Apple or something like that. But you're not going and supervise any big football club or basketball club in the world from St. Lucia. That you become an ambassador of St. Lucia because your name will call a lot. And the manager of the football team of, of wherever Barcelona is a St. Lucia. That's and being an ambassador of St. Lucia. But you're going out there, you know, to work almost like a slave in these little areas where the Canadian people don't even want to work in these conditions. But we are sending our people to work there. And King, you know, you should be ashamed of yourself, man. You know, to say how people go in there as ambassadors and then so you said that you went there to say you went and you didn't do the right job. You didn't do what you ought to have done. To make to ensure that these people are going to work in a very safe environment, and they uh, the welfare, the well-being will be taken care of, you know, and that they would work and that they would get, you know, full benefits for their labor. You didn't you didn't ensure that a man like you who was brought up you when you normally uh, a person we call black, you're a black person. Your generation is a generation of people who experience slavery. And you allow St. Lucians to go and work in a farm like that, to be exploited and to be kicked and abused and, and, and in, in a manner like that. And you, 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 you're proud to, to still consider yourself continuing as a, as a minister in government. You're not embarrassed and ashamed to resign. You should resign from the position where you are in there now, King. I mean, you just don't have, you know, you don't have that kind of, uh, or, you, know, you, you know, the kind of audacity of the reality of you being in government and allowing these things to happen and you comfortable to continue talking crap on our air, in our air, on radio, on television, and these are the things you are allowing to happen to our women here in St. Lucia. And some people said, you know, 
We rejected Alan Shasta, call him white, call him all kind of thing. But we sending people in countries of people of European descent and that they could kick our people in the butt. And what we say for that? Shasta never kicked nobody here, for sure. I know some of you all may wonder why I say that. I got, I have to say it. Anyway, the numbers are 489. Let me, let, me, let me say it again to you all out there. Those of you who are on the air, who are seeing us, I'm not sure if we are streaming live on Facebook. I'm not sure. Uh, I have to check to see if that is happening, if we are streaming live on Facebook. And if we are, because they have a habit of, you know, just cutting us off, finding a way to, to put us off. And um, so I probably want to really want to make sure if we are streaming live on Facebook right now, and, and, and that um, if we are streaming live, you will know. And you, you, you know, just send it to your friends. Send it to your friends out there. Send it to them, talk to them, tell them, you know, that. Talk to your friends. Send it to your friends out there. Yeah, you know, and tell them that we are there, we are live on Facebook and so on, you know. Um, some uh, person just say, amen, brother, hyper. Yeah, and, 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 and so on, you know. So, if we are on and we are streaming live, that's, that's good. That's all good. I hope you guys are there watching us. And you are sending it to your friends and, 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 and sending it to your family. You know, you know, share it. Share the view here where we are experiencing in St. Lucia. You know, because this administration is not doing us any good to tell you the truth about it. And anything they get involved in, they, they, they bragging, you know, bragging to send people abroad to go and work under slave conditions is atrocious, erroneous, unbelievable, unforgivable, unforgettable for someone to take black people, people of African descent who have experienced slavery in an age where we are fighting for reparation. To send them in these hell holes and for them to experience what they experience is without making sure that they don't have that kind of experience of slavery anymore. And you King allow that to happen to our black women in St. Lucia. 40 of them you all send to Canada, in Nova Scotia, Canada. It's embarrassing. I don't know all the thing about the temperatures and you know the, the various type of temperatures of Canada but it's a place I know where temperatures just really go very low in terms of coldness that's a place where well there's a place in Canada called Alberta I understood it's one of the, the lowest degree in terms of coldness in the world Canada is, 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 a, is, a, is a snow country and to bring people so far away from their country, so deep into Canada, takes you two hours from Toronto to, to, to Nova Scotia. And, and for, for people to be experiencing what they're experiencing in that part of the world, it's atrocious, ridiculous, to say the least. And you're telling me you expect us to come out of slavery as soon and then to expect that one day the, the people who stole from us stole us from Africa, stole all our wealth from Africa, will one day just tell us, look, here it is back. And they know if they do that, they too will become poor and impoverished in the world, and we will become rich. They will do that. People who fought hard to stay rich will be easy to just give away their riches and say, for them to stay poor. How could how you ever think something like that would ever happen? I don't know whosoever think that thing will ever happen is dreaming. They're living in a dream world. It's a dream land. And I don't want to live in that land. So I'm putting the, the thing out there for you all one more time to say to you that um, I know you're watching. Thank you for watching, whosoever is watching. But I just want to say to you, to you guys that. Um, just please, please, just tune in. Tune in to
I, I try to get that thing together. So all of you all now in Parliament and on Facebook, just tune into Pali Fushman now. We have about half an hour left, not much time left, but we were hoping to hear something from some of you guys. We have not heard nothing um, on, on, on it, you know. Uh, we have what you call the, uh, the, the WhatsApp um, platform. 4894781. We also expecting your calls. We haven't heard nothing from you so far. Uh, we don't know what is happening there right now. But you can also think of it in the sense that where we are here right now in St. Lucia. Jamaica has just boasted to have one of the best uh, you know, season. Um, and, and, and this is off season. Eh? Remember, remember RCI has a, 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 a booth in Jamaica. They have uh they have they, they have something in in some part in jamaica uh, what's that place name they, they 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 have something there okay um i went there once and i trying to remember the name of the thing that they have there you understand they have in in in, in some part in jamaica and that is belonging to them and as a result the ships and them would come in at any time, every time, you know, and um, the reality about it is Jamaica is doing exceedingly well when it comes to a uh, cruise ship. Um, it is just said that um, they say that Jamaica, um, what in Jamaica to, um, uh, reward, records the highest ever you know summer arrivals the highest ever summer arrivals in jamaica and this was reported by edmund barclay who was the minister of tourism in jamaica jamaica has a pair and, and that pair is in falmont i just remember that there the pair is in falmont and the pair actually belongs to um, royal caribbean international an agency uh, 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 you know uh, uh, um, that was supposed uh, an agent dealing with cruise ships and so on that was supposed to establish the redevelopment of our port in St. Lucia. I remember some time ago when P um, Stephen King was Prime Minister there was a memorandum of understanding signed and I was part of there, I was there I discussed with people and then I went to Jamaica um, to see the pier there at Falmont and what was being done in that that vendors and all the big establishments were in one place and so on and that when tourists came out they could get they, they could view both the vendors and the big established Colombian emeralds and you know and so on and so forth and that was supposed to be something here as well but Kenny Anthony said no because I think they, they said that the person who was involved in trying to finance the project was a guy who was involved with um, asphalt and mining and Kenny Anthony said once the guy was involved with asphalt and mining he had nothing to do with the guy Kenny Anthony again you know and that's why you find Royal Caribbean International did not continue working on the whole question of the memorandum of understanding with uh, with the time when um, um, uh, Stephenson King was Prime Minister. So Stephenson King come and talk about these things. This kind of things you're talking about these days doesn't make much sense. Come and talk about some of these things. And Kenny Anthony, you too. You know, talk about some of the things that you you were talking about. You know, there were there were criminals politicians, businessmen, policemen in, in, in high places, people in government that were involved in the whole question of the operation restore peace and so on. Come and tell us more about these things. What is people? Are they there in government now? Is it because today our crime situation has been escalating to a certain level and can't stop because we have quest people who are with questionable character within our, our, our government, our, our cabinet? Is it because police officers are involved getting people to buy them drinks who are criminals and so on? And then the criminals have friends in, in the police force. The police force have friends and family who are involved in criminality and as a result we cannot get things done properly. 
Is it the reason why you, you expunge Philip J. Pierre? You expunge endless laws against the COVID laws that was passed by the former administration because certain of your friends like Christopher Hunt and others were, were charged you know, with COVID lawbreakers. And then there was this thing. Somebody told me I was wrong when I said that this thing happened in Suase and instead this thing with Richard Frederick and, and um, when shall we happen in Castries. My apologies if I was wrong, because I, I, I don't always get it right as I said, sometimes I do have it wrong, but if that incident where Richard Frederick was in the face of Wayne Shalry in a defiant manner, the, and that defiant was a defiant against the law of the country, not, 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 it, wasn't, it wasn't a defiant against, uh, you know, Wayne Shalry, no, no, it was defiant against the law of the country defiant against law and order in the country that you send a message that you know and that's why the young people they don't want to obey laws they don't want they want to break laws instead of obeying it young people could curse police officers and tell them people who can call, call a police officer dog and all things like that and is that a society that's what we want here i don't want that i don't want no one to be cursing i don't want to be cursing police officers I would prefer police officers to say, hello, Peter Rasaipa, good afternoon, you know, um, we have reason to believe that so-and-so, or we have a warrant for your arrest today for so-and-so, or Mr. Isaac, um, your behavior was bad in public and so on, and um, we, we believe that we're going to take you down for so-and-so and so-and-so, and, so and, so and then you decide if you want to go down with us peacefully, or we'll have to call for reinforcement to take you down. These are the kind of things that I expect police to do, but no. When you grab fellas by the by the collar, they themselves grab you by the collar, you have their hands exposed, anything could have happened. You could have pulled a gun trying to shoot you. You yourself could have pulled a gun and kill him. You know, these are the situations we have in St. Lucia that we don't need to be something that is a prevailing situation in our country. I'm saddened but what's going on here now. I mean, I heard now in some part in Babuno there was a shooting and it's a possibility that someone died there. And it's going to be probably the 50th murder, homicide for the year in St. Lucia. Where are we going from here? St. Lucia seems to be becoming the, the, the highest per capita murder country in the world. In the world. A country of 238 square miles and a hundred and probably 65 or 60,000 people or so on or 70,000 people. Where are we now? Chief people are not having children like before. So we can't boast about having a big population. People are having very few children. A lot of young people are not having children. They have been, and if they haven't, they're having one or two. Schools have been closed because there are not enough students to occupy the schools. They all doesn't look at what's going on in the world. Even Barbados, I understood, is in decline. And today I'm even hearing that Mia Motley is, you know, seeking assistance from the IMF, a country that has been doing better than us at all times. Where do you think we are? When Philip J.P. have done nothing to, to make things better in our country. He have done nothing. All what we are benefiting from so far, and I must admit, is because of the actions and the, the, the actions and some of the positions that Alan Chastney has, has taken. He has taken some bad positions I didn't like. But some of the positions that they have taken in terms of opening the country from COVID, which Philip J.P. thought that oh, he is the only one who thought that St. Lucia would come back to what it was in COVID was in. But now everything he's projecting is based on tourism. He's boasting of more hotels and boasting of uh, you know, arrivals and so on and so forth. He's boasting about all these things. He's signing documents about the opening of hotels in one department and so on. And the whole question of the whole thing about, you know, um, you know, Chastney giving uh, uh, Sanders $25 million. We try to make these things a big thing. But countries are in the country. Bus and businesses are in the country. And they employ people. You need to do things to, to make sure that they stay here. Let me tell you something. I understood that Winwood and Leewood Bury have been offered a lot to leave St. Lucia and come to Trinidad. If you all didn't know, I'm telling you all that. Because they are telling them that the amount they're paying 
for electricity in terms of the megabytes or, or, or the grill, the amount in terms of percentage of paid electricity. Trinidad is, ex is, 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 is offering them four times less than what they have to pay. And if the St. Lucia government have to give the Winwood and Leo Bury incentives to stay here, we're not supposed to blame the government for that. Because the employment, they're creating, the product that we're producing, and that it sells in different countries, and the generation of income, and the paying of light of, of taxes and so on, and paying benefits to workers and so on, is something we need here in St. Lucia. So if Sanders wanted to set up a hotel here, La Resource, and the Labour Party operatives prevent it from happening, they were working against us, the citizenry of St. Lucia. If tourism has become the product that we have to work towards and not agriculture, if agriculture is not the product that is going to make St. Lucia be sustainable and is tourism with the other services that it brings with it and so on, then let us go for it. Let's go for all the other services, the informatics and the, you know, the digital global economy that is emerging that we need to be a part of. And tourism is part of that. Let us embrace it. But let us not bat beat our chest when we are not the people who makes it happen or who made it happen. Because I make sure I want to know and I want to make note that is because of the move of the former administration to open the country, even in the midst of having the 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 uh, the, the word I want to use, you know, that the places that had the most COVID, they would use. There was a, a word that must be used to say that, okay? But these places where the majority of COVID cases were coming out. The, well, the word I want to use now, I just got it. The epicenter of COVID, like America, Canada, and, and England, and Alan opened for tourists to come in. And he said, you all can't buy a drink, but we're allowing the tourists to be able to buy drinks or to have drinks available to them in at the hotels. And me and you couldn't go in a, a bar or in the supermarket and buy drinks because he thought the tourism industry was so important for the development of the country that he had to do that and he did the right thing. Philip Jepier thought he was the only one who thought that tourism would come back to what it was and today he's trying to gloat about it. But Philip, you're wrong, Philip. You are the little black boy from Marshall. You don't understand these things. When Excuse me, when Peter Josie was saying what he was saying about Kule Wayayai and then people prefer to have a person with the color of Alan Chastney to negotiate our business in St. Lucia and so on and so forth. I actually thought that, you know, he was making a, a you know, a cardinal mistake, a cardinal sin for making these statements. And I was really against Josie. I thought Josie was losing it. Chose the effort was losing it. And again, you know, as soon as everything and the election was gone, Josie was right back to who Josie really was, a real serious patriot of St. Lucia. But Josie, in a sense, I must say, he was right. You know why I must say Josie was right? For, because as if Josie knew what we was going to get, couldn't be better than Alan Chastney. And that's what I thought. I thought what we were going to get was better than Alan Chastney. But Josie knew it wasn't, and Josie said it. What we are going to get was not better. It's better we keep that guy there. <laughs> and that's all I want to say about that, because this is something that is deep. <laughs> and so on. And then he came and, oh, little black boy. And thing. up to now, you can't make nothing happen. You there in a cabinet with some fellas. I suspect they all have their hand in your throat. Richard Frederick is talking about division in UWP and division here. And it, I mean, I know they are trying their best to spend monies to create division in the UWP so that people get rid of Alan Chastney. But essentially, what they are really doing is to show that the person they're really afraid of 
in the UWP is Alan Chastain. So Alan, do what is necessary, do what is important, and build bigger and longer and better bridges within the media and don't depend on promoting as if Sky FM level. And I have nothing against Sky FM. I want you all to get that as well. All I'm saying is be careful on how you're trying to isolate other media houses or maybe people who are speaking on your behalf or maybe giving you support and you're not giving them the kind of traction that they deserve. Now I'm saying that because I'm here. And I'm here every Tuesday on Palais Franchement, on this medium. Caribbean Hits FM and Hits FM 92.1 in the north and 91.1 in the south. And then we need support, we need assistance. We're talking about the reality of what's going on in the country. You may be benefiting from what we're saying, Alan. Therefore, you should try your best to give support to these sort of media people who are talking there on your behalf. And I hope some of your friends who you, you have, you are confident in, are going to tell you some of these things. If they don't tell you these things, apparently they want you to remain in opposition. That's my point. And my point may not be the point that you all are really embracing in this time. But St. Lucia, this is a country that is in serious problem now. On the problems of crime, we don't and out. Problems of inflation, the prices of goods, we are done and out. And the merchants might be selling more because they were not selling at all during the price of COVID. So it's not nothing that Philip has done. If people are working as Chastney opened the country and you're getting jobs and you're getting money, you will start to buy things. So obviously the merchants and them and businessmen will start to sell. The only thing about it is that the prices of goods have increased. And as a result of the increase, they have given people who are purchasing a lesser purchasing power. So people are poorer under this administration. And this administration has done nothing to make things better for people. They promise, and Philip, you promise that, that you're going to assist people and give them better off. You're going to triple the amount Chastney gave to vendors, taxi drivers, and others. And you have not made that happen. And some of your acolytes, you know, some of your surrogates, and some of your people and them, and your satellites are saying how, um, well, that's not what he said. He said if he was, as if to say, you could be in opposition and be the prime minister at the same time, which is so ridiculous. I couldn't even believe my good friend as he would think so. He would think that the man was talking about if he was prime minister at the same time. And so you're trying to tell me, Azzi, so if he was prime minister at the same time that he was leader of the opposition, that's the time he would be able to assist people. And not that he's making a promise that he would assist people. But the people that he promised he will assist them when he get into office, when they give him monies, the big businesses that is lobbying, and giving government or political parties, sorry, monies to campaign. And when they get all these monies, they are giving them all these concessions and benefits and all the things that they get and so on in the society. They was just saying to them that if he was prime minister, he would give it to them, but he's not prime minister uh, and he couldn't give it. And now he's prime minister, he's not going to give it. He's giving it to them. He we go to them and they give him a hundred, two, three, four hundred thousand dollars and say, when you are prime minister, I want a concession for this and for that and for this and for that. So when he become prime minister, he could tell these guys anything. He will not get money again in the next election. So, Azzi, my friend, I know you are my friend. I, I, I have no qualms, no problem, no quarrel. We could never be enemies. But when it comes to politics, we like you it. Hard. So the people that he promised, the guy from 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 um, wherever, who wanted to come and set a big business here, from Lebanon, and the, the other guys from Syria to spend big money with labor, so that labor could win. That the guy from Lebanon to come and invest bigger business in St. Lucia. So, is that he not getting the benefits for that? 
all the talk that now the police station was demolished and the, the, the fire, the uh, um, um, custody suite and so on and we rumors are, are going around saying that it is given to that same Syrian guy uh, you know and he will build the facilities and rent it to government is that true is that true what we hearing is that true? is that really true we are asking the government the question is it true that these same Syrian people who finance you know your, your, your Labour Party against a, a Lebanese guy and so on is it true that, that, is that true too about the Lebanese guy who wanted to spend the money? And is it true against the Syrian and now the Syrian willing to buy the property and then you willing to take the, you know, uh, and make him build the facility and rent it for him? Is it true? Tell us if that's true. The numbers are 489 4781. Our time is running out. I don't think I'll take one minute more than the time I have here. Uh, apart from, I, I think maybe I start a few minutes, a few minutes late. So maybe, maybe, maybe 9.32 or 9.33. But that's it. We're not going to go too far from the reality. I just want to say that um, I have, I'm, I've really enjoyed, I've really enjoyed having this discourse tonight with you all. I don't know if I am, I've been doing the kind of job I ought to do. I am very much concerned about what is going on in our country. I'm concerned about where the direction this country is going into. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm saddened by no answers to some of the problems that are affecting the country of crime and so on. I'm saddened by, you know, there is no strategy to, to take guns off the street. I'm saddened by we have no kind of thing for witness protection, so witness could come and give us information on what is going on in the country. I'm saddened by that. I'm also saddened by all the things that are, that are going on in the country and the problems of no vision of the new, of this administration, sorry, and, um, you know, employment is of the low key and, and young fellas have to have guns to make sure that they have a meal tomorrow to protect their life, protect their friends, rent equipments and guns and so on to their friends who have to go and commit crime to sustain themselves and you know and the, the whole cycle of criminality and crime continues in the country. Homicides are just escalating. St. Lucia, one of the most the country of the most unsolved crimes and homicides in the country. And it saddens me to know that I live in a country like that, I must tell you. You know, I really want a better country for St. Lucia where our children will be safe, our generation and citizenry will be safe to traverse the country, go about their business and so on and so forth. When people commit crimes that they can brought, be brought to justice, be charged for the offense and, and pay for the crime, you know, the you know the, the penalty should suit the crime as well and so on and so forth you know charging people three thousand twenty thousand dollars for the position of marijuana would not prevent them from not marijuana a gun will not prevent them from being in possession of a gun a gun for them is the next meal tomorrow the protection of their lives as well and the lives of their friends and some of the members of their family and things of that sort it's a sad situation where we are here today it's sad for us to be in that position and to see all that is being done is people like Hilaire is getting the director of, of, of finance and those who are director of the budget and so on are people they bring in from outside. They are preparing themselves to protect themselves from roof or gate, from all kind of gate. Kenny Anthony is out there not saying nothing as to what's going on, but he was there and he keep talking as if he's an outsider, going into parliament and criticizing a few things of how the administration is doing things. They promised that they would bring him in six months time, six months time, he's not there. Uh, Norbert was supposed to get a ministry in six months time, he hasn't got no ministry, he's still deputy speaker of the house, you know, and, and this thing is just keep going, you know, just in like a cycle that just keep just a recycling of things and so on and we're not going nowhere far from where we are here now so my situation to you is that 
I am appreciating you guys, appreciating us. Those who want to contribute to the continuation of Pali Fonshma, you could call me. I have a number. I, I will give you one number for me. My number is 485-2044. Call this number if you want to assist or call 489-4781 and ask to speak to one of the people in charge and that you could assist to see to it that that's this show, including other shows, continue on the air. Um, this was Pali Foshma with Peter Rasaipa, uh, the Pali Foshma with Mara Saipa, and we were simulcasting both on, 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 on Caribbean Hits FM, on Facebook, we were, we were simulcasting as well, or streaming live, or streaming live, sorry, and we are also on radio 92.1 in the north and 91 1.1 in the south. This was Pali Foshma with your host Russ Iper on Hits FM and Caribbean Hits FM. Thank you very much. Okay.